Guten Tag. This is the BF1240 by the company Babeco. BF stands for best friend. It actually stands for drist and stand. I actually don't know. I just assume. The price is 145 euros without any gadgets. Two axis coordinate table with clamping claws set costs 156 euros. Complete 301 euros. It's advertised as a meal stand and that is what I'm gonna consider. It came nice packaged. Carton, professional and solid for sure. Assembly all right, but fine adjustment of the eccentric in the guide housing was sloppy. Both eccentric screws were turned in the same direction. What caused jumping when I'm lowering the machine carrier? Like a plane would suddenly sink some meters because of an air gap. What leads us to the eccentric adjustment? The idea of the adjustment we are eccentric is a better idea than execution. It's fiddly. You need patience and more than one try. More than three tries. Maybe even more than eight tries to get a decent tension and not too high tension. The lower eccentric can be turned and turned. I get no resistance to low resistance. Suddenly I got good contact with the T-slot. No, 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 no. I meant slot. It's just a slot. And a uh, head decent resistant. It's gambling right there. You can turn that bolt until it uh, disappear. Once that's done, it's time to use. If there wasn't something, I will tell you later. And this drill stand has much to offer. So many ways to use this drill stand. As a mill, as a drill, as a latte. I mean, this drill stand limits might be your own creativity. In the previous sequence, I was milling brass. But brass isn't that impressive. Now I meet up with this chuck of steel, milling the edge fine vine and also cut 10 thou of steel. I'm using a 12 mm mill bit and obvious it's too long. The shaking came from the fact that I didn't bolt the drill stand down, but it seems solid. The drill stand is out of aluminum, steel and cast iron. The last thing that hinder you from milling is the bolt that fastens the pillar. No chance that bolt will hold it in place when big forces and torque will occur. And I talk from experience. When I was milling steel too deep by accident, the column got twisted so hard that also the bolt got bent. You will need to build a stopper. It's made of palm. I milled this thing with the drill stand and put a M8 thread in the stopper. That way I don't need to drill a hole in the bar. Now you're good to go rather safely, but there's still a major issue. The accuracy of this drill stand may stand. You would mean that such device provides 90 degree angles or very close to it. I measured it and I was surprised. Even just visually, it's recognizable. Here are the measurements I took. Every measurement relates to the surface of the base. You tear the base and then measure the side angles of the bar, the guide housing, the extension arm and so on. And what really stood out among these inaccuracies was the extension arm and its belongings, the housings and the machine carrier. Also the housing seems to have big inaccuracies and play. What does have play for sure is the machine carrier. It's close to invisible when it's tightened on the extension arm. But under pressure the angle can be manipulated. I'm also not sure about the 
43mm receiving hole for the machine carrier. Is it straight or is it not? I can't measure it. I give it the benefit of the doubt and say the drilling machine snack could be inaccurate too. Maybe everything is inaccurate. What caused an angle of 88 something? Milling with a 88.58 degrees will never result in flat surface. Relating to the drill stand, there is a weird jumping that occurring every time you mill from right to left side. And there it is. The end mill was jumping because the right side of the end mill is lower than the left side. What is caused by the angle? What you can see here clearly is a much deeper cut near the edge. Much bigger step, which ruins the surface. To get rid of that, you need to mill from left to right the same you did before from right to left. And as you see, I'm going half through above the surface. The step and height issue caused by the angle gets more obvious. I speculate that this jumping issue isn't caused only by the angle of the end mill but also caused by the play of the machine carrier or end bent in the extension arm. No matter what material you mill, even wood or plastic got this step issue. First I take off the machine carrier. Then I loosen this uh, extension arm. Now I'm going to take advantage of this uh, play and test what um, and test what uh, and test what um, Oh nice, uh, very nice and uh, test what um, size will fit in there 0 0.2 millimeters no fit in there also in the back I also gonna try to manipulate uh, uh, this uh, <sighs> yes by looking for uh, gaps and uh, reposition the neck of the drilling machine uh, this over exaggeration and um, manipulate uh, the angle to test if I can get 90 degrees the question is how much accuracy I can get and the answer is yes. I mentioned it earlier, the machine carrier, it's the key to this puzzle. It is all bad and good things combined. The machine carrier has play. So much play that when you put in the drilling machine you would need a long wooden bar and a counterweight like Sailor Moon. The receiving hole is bought at an angle. What I gonna try to compensate over the play of the machine carrier itself by adding two screws and taps. I also try to plasticize the receiving hole. Level the angles out with a mixture of epoxy and iron powder. I work the sp I mark the spots and afterwards I tossed on the goo. Later I had to send it. But in the end, no success for me. So I had to get rid of all of it and start from scratch. You know, the machine carrier has these little tools with which you can adjust angles. You just turn the carrier on the octagon. 
I realized to compensate the off angle I needed to play in the carrier twos. So I rasped them, sanded them slightly. Precious. And once in a while tested a redefined play until it was satisfactory. I mean it was okay. But I understood two screws on the top wouldn't be enough because when I tightened the carrier on the octagon that lousy living came back. That's why I added new screws on the bottom and opposite side. I glued in a 0.25 mm plate. I used Uhu Enfest 300. It holds on, but now the receiving hole is quite tight. It's doable. But my boy Short Boy and my Long Boy can help me out here. You just need a little wedge. Yes, yes, it's too tight. Yeah, it's too tight. I mean, yeah. After all this trial and error, the angle is quite decent. It seems very close to 90. I still think the receiving hole should be readjusted first via thin plates. And then get fine tuned with these added screws. You noticed I just glued one plate. But actually, there should be more in every spot I marked before when I tried to fill in epoxy goo. Also checking the angle with a drill bit isn't ideal because it hasn't contact with the surface of the square on the way. But now it actually meets my expectations. To round off the video, let's find out if the gap issue is still present. Will it jump? Will the end mill jump? First, I used a roughing end mill and then a finishing end mill. The results are decent. The surface finish is much better and the step issue inclusive the end mill jumping is gone. This is satisfactory. Wow! Oh my god! Nonetheless, here's my summary, my conclusion. Is the thing worth to buy? Well, it depends. What? You haven't got enough money. You haven't got enough room. It has to be portable and lightweight. It's easy to store. Then yes, these are some good reasons to buy this drill stand. Is the price right? Here I am a bit torn apart. I mean, all this stuff is quite modular. You get a drill stand and there are additional parts which build up on the system. So I don't like the price compared to the inaccuracies. I mean the price for this stand alone isn't high, but with all these additional gadgets you get quite high costs. What let me think that accuracy could be should be included in this calculation. Otherwise this drill stand is solid and rigid. It's well made. The guide housing is another story. It is thin walled, even though it holds up hard work. But I would appreciate cast iron. It would be uniform and match the base. Thicker walls just for secured feelings. You can work with it. 
It's well made, even though I criticize stuff here and there. It has much to offer and it delivers. But keep in mind that its little sister has better accuracy in retail condition already. So if you don't want to mill, you maybe give the B1230 a chance. You should decide yourself if it's worse or not. It's individual. To declare, this is all experimental. It's not the final version of improvements. There will be separate videos about modifications and optimizations.